Hey guys, welcome to my first impressions of my adventures with Superman. Before I begin, the usual disclaimers. These are my first impressions on this series, as the title of this video would suggest, meaning that my opinions and feelings about the show might change and more than likely will change as the show progresses. And secondly, these are my opinions on the show strictly based on the first two episodes. Nobody can judge an entire series by just the first two episodes. So please keep that in mind as I move forward. Um, the first question that is on my mind, I just have to get this off of my chest. Why the hell is this show on Adult Swim at midnight? Um, this is a very lighthearted T it's literally rated TVPG, so it's a general audience's show. I, why isn't this on during the day, during regular scheduled Cartoon Network programming? Um, and I post this question on social media, and the general consensus, and it was a little bit depressing, um, is that nowadays kids don't have the patience to sit through a 22-minute cartoon. They, they cannot endure eight minutes of commercials. Um, but they can sit through many hours of Stranger Things as long as it's on streaming. And for those of you who don't know, the release model for My Adventures with Superman is that they release it on Adult Swim at midnight, and then the next day they release it on streaming on Max. If that's true, if like this is done so to satisfy you know the adult audience by hey, oh yeah here we go we put it on TV um, and also the 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 younger the young adult audience um, the preteen audience by putting it on streaming where they can watch it on their phone and consume it in the way that they are now accustomed to then that's very sad um, cause, because we're not we're not teaching this generation patience. You know, being a comic book fan requires a great deal of patience. When you're reading a comic book series, you know, you get one issue on a Wednesday, and you only get those, what, 12, 24 pages, and that's it. And that's all you get for a whole month. You have to wait a whole other month to get the next issue to find out what happens next in the story. And then after that storyline is done, you have to wait a month or two before the trade paperback is released and you can collect the whole story if you want to read it that way. Um, it requires patience. And also, it's better to consume these stories that way because it gives you time to digest everything that you're reading. Um, but if that's what they need to do for this show to survive, for this show to last then it is what it is, but it's it's kind of depressing that they feel like, oh, they're just un underestimating the younger audience, and they're just going, oh, they don't have the patience, so um, it's like, oh, here it is on TV, but the, the next day it's on streaming, so they can watch it quickly, or, or, or they know it's on streaming, so they can watch it at their own pace, they can watch it on their phone, um, if they don't care to watch it one episode at a time, they know that the episodes will get strong viewership after the whole season is released and they can just binge it. Uh, it is what it is. If there was ever a visual metaphor for cable waving the white flag and telling streaming that streaming has won, this is it. The way that this show and Unicorn Warriors Eternal were released. Anyway, but that's fine. That's, that's not that big of a deal. That's just an observation. Let's talk about the show itself. Um... I have some. I have decided to um, separate my opinions on these two episodes into pros and cons. I'm going to start with the cons because um, I want to end this video on a positive note. I have a few cons, and just please keep in mind that I'm an old school comic book fan. The the bronze era of comics was my first era of comics. Um, I've been following these characters since I was seven years old, so I have a very old school perspective of of these characters and their stories um with that in mind my 
first gripe. Let's do the cons first. My first gripe is that, my God, is this show soft. It's just so soft. It's just a lot of curved edges, uh, a p very pastel color palette. It's, it's just everything is so soft and safe and lighthearted that it's it's almost nauseating. Um, which is, I'm not saying that's a horrible thing. It's perfectly fine for certain type of media to be that way. That's it's, I'm not dissing shows that are comfort shows that are just safe to watch and you know nobody's going to get hurt and everything is fine. But I think that every great comic book series, even the comic book series that are in tone lighthearted, like Miss Marvel, which I absolutely love, but even Miss Marvel, the comic, has an edge to it. There is no edge in this show. You, you never doubt that the characters are going to survive, that nobody's going to get hurt, that everything's going to be fine. You, I don't get a sense of there being any kind of stakes here, and it bothers me. I don't want to watch a comic book-based series, or at least one based on Superman, completely relaxed and completely detached, knowing that everybody's going to survive and everything's going to be cool. Um, I want for the peril to be real. While I know that the main characters, especially Superman and Lois, will survive because they're the main characters and they need to be there for everything around them to continue to thrive, when characters like um, Jimmy Olsen and Perry White and Cat Grant are put in danger, um, or the villains could, you know, are put in danger, I want to feel like, holy crap, this character could die. Holy crap, this city could be destroyed. Holy crap, that train could crash into another train and Superman doesn't show up. I want to feel that. Uh, I'm not getting that feeling from this show. It's just, like I said, soft. It is softer than baby poop. Um, <laughs> so, again, just my impressions from just the first two episodes, so bear with me. Also, oh my god. There is so much banter here. This show is 90% talking, 10% action. Um, again, is this is based the first the first superhero uh, the, excuse me, the first Superman comic was an in action comic in the action comics magazine. Action comics. And this show is just so just cutesy wootsy banter, just lots of snappy talking back and forth like a sitcom or a Quentin Tarantino movie with all the curse words removed. Um, just so, so much talking, oh my god, and yes, it's most of it is very entertaining, um, but after a while, you're just looking at your watch and you're going, um, you know, they only have about eight, seven minutes left in this episode and literally Clark has done no Superman shit. None. None whatsoever. It's just been blah, 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 back and forth, on and on and on and on, endlessly. Um, and it's funny, and it's uh, charming, and it's uh, adorable. There's so much adorableness in this show. Um, but I remember in the title reading that it was about Superman. Can we, you know, maybe see him do some Superman stuff before it ends, please? And which brings me to one of the elements that irked me the most. The action sequences are not bad, but they're just okay. There's nothing impactful about them. There's nothing memorable about them. When they happen, oh, thank God that this exists in the show. Um, I'm so glad that they managed to put the banter aside, which they obviously love so much, uh, to show us him actually being Superman. Um, but when we get there, it's just okay. It's not bad. But it's not great either. It's just okay. Nothing impactful or memorable about the action sequences. Uh, what am I talking about when I refer to it being, you know, impactful and memorable? Like, for example, the first big fight scene that Superman has in Superman the Animated Series is against John Corbin while John is in the Lexo suit, uh, 1.0, the original one. Um, and they have this knockout, drag out brawl in Metropolis. They're destroying buildings. They knock over fire hydrant. The water's going in the air, like water's coming down. It's very epic. Um, he's firing these huge bullets at Superman. The shells are so big that they crash and get indented in the windshields of the police cars that are around them. They end up on top of a building fighting. 
Superman rips off the arms of the robot, rips off one leg, and John Corbin that was before this was in this imposing robot, you know, killing machine, is now hopping on one leg uh, at Superman's mercy. Superman can do anything to him. Superman flies right up to him and just goes, Dunk! and just pokes him, and the whole robot just falls off a building, boom, defeated, pathetically. Memorable, impactful. Um, when Superman has his final battle with Darkseid on that show, the last episode, Legacy, Part 2, I believe, um, Darkseid has him at his mercy. He's just pummeled Superman. Superman, yes, Superman in his grasp, he is going to kill him. And he's about to fire his Omega Beans at Superman. He is done. Then all of a sudden, Superman covers Darkseid's eyes with his bare hands and the Omega Beans bounce off of Superman's palms and just shoot over the top of Darkseid's head on fire, just kaboom, explodes and you think Dark 